It's raining cats and dogs outside, so we're back in the studio. It feels really strange, but I'm very grateful for all the rain because our gardens really needed it, and birds and my kids absolutely love playing in the puddles. Welcome back to Brown Bird News. have been really weird this year. First of all, they showed up much later than, than usual. We actually ran a survey on our Facebook page and fair enough, I wasn't the only one with late hummers. And then uh, their visit to the feeders has been really sporadic to the point that people started asking me, where are the hummers? Well, they're still around, don't worry. We just need to pay attention to what's happening out in the wild with the weather and everything else. For example, uh, here we're having a really hot summer. So if you place your feeder somewhere where there's a lot of sunlight, the nectar in the feeder goes bad really fast. So try moving your hummingbird feeder to a shady spot. Um, I keep all our hummingbird feeders in our cedar hedges actually. But if you don't have any shady spots, consider putting any kind of contraption that stops, that prevents direct uh, sunlight hitting your hummingbird feeder and check the nectar um, every day if you're going through a really hot period. I've learned it uh, this summer. I got too busy and left my feeder for a few days and fair enough, the nectar was really uh, clouded. This year, actually, I decided to have only one hummingbird feeder, a smaller one, so I can change nectar frequently. Another thing to consider, yes, hummingbirds love nectar, but it's not their main uh, source of food. They need protein, which they get from bugs like mosquitoes and fruit flies. So they're always busy looking for that type of food. And uh, another thing that I learned this year, actually, if you have uh, yellow-bellied stepsuckers in your backyard, which we do this summer, hummers tend to follow them because they really enjoy drinking all the sap from the holes that sapsuckers make. So don't worry, hummers are around. So they'll probably show up again at your feeders the closer we get to fall migration. Daphne is looking for some advice on how to deter cliff swallows from building their nests on a house. Hi Daphne, just so you know what you did with the cliff swallow nests, that is destroying them as they were being built, it was actually illegal because it contravenes the Migratory Bird Treaty. I only tell you this because if someone had reported you, you could have been subject to fines. Years ago my former dean at my college had the nests of a cliff swallow colony hose sprayed from our building due to the mess they created with debris and feces and he got into a lot of hot water over that. Meanwhile, I do sympathize with your predicament. If the birds are getting through the chicken wire that you applied, try a smaller hole size or perhaps hardware cloth. Cliff swallows like to make their own nests of clay pellets and they don't use nest boxes like tree swallows. I tried to find on the internet some ready-made fake pellet nests, because I'm sure someone sells them, but you can't just stick them anywhere. These birds are colony nesters and moreover, they generally build their nests on the underside of eaves of buildings and under bridges. The owner would pretty much have to build a fake wall with a narrow roof and eaves, such as one I've seen in uh, one of the websites I've visited. But there's no guarantee that the birds will use them either, so he could be spending money on a lost cause. On the other hand, swallows are obviously finding food there for their nestling, so it might be a great idea. On the bright side, cliff swallow colonies, sometimes they just suddenly disappear and the birds just go elsewhere to nest. But you're only allowed to put up barriers to prevent them from nesting and not destroy their nests. You could consult with your local wildlife authorities to see what could be done. Maybe they'll be sympathetic enough to let you remove the nests. Watching hummingbirds at my bird feed is, is so much fun, but to be honest with you, I get so excited when I see them visit my flowers. Uh, every year I try to add a different type of uh, flower to my garden to attract hummingbirds. I try to go for native species, but apparently hummers don't really care. They go for the non-native as well as long as the flower produces enough nectar for them. Uh, if you're interested in finding out which flowers these birds are attracted to, please visit this website, the Hummingbird Guide. And here are some of the flowers that I'm growing on my property. They're spread out all over the place. So I have cone flowers, bee balm, cardinal flowers, phlox, and this year I added two yarrow plants.
I can't exactly recall where and when it was that I first laid my eyes on a color TV after spending my entire childhood in black and white, but I do remember what a shock and delight it was. And if I was suddenly blessed with the eyes of a hummingbird, I would be totally shocked again. According to a recent study out of Princeton University done by Mary Caswell Stoddard and her colleagues, hummingbirds can see a very different and impressive array of colors that are invisible to our eyes. In a series of experiments involving sugar water and LED tubes, the researchers found that wild broad-tailed hummingbirds can discern colors created from various combinations of ultraviolet and visible light. This ability likely helps the birds home in on nectar-bearing flowers covered in patterns that are imperceptible to people. I'll bet you didn't know that the average human eye can distinguish around one million different colors. Our color vision depends on three types of cones, special cells and retinas sensitive to red, blue, or green light. However, many birds, reptiles, and fish have an additional kind of cone that can pick up ultraviolet light. And that ability gives them a whole other dimension to perceive colors. Stoddard's team put out two feeders for wild hummers in Colorado, one containing plain water and the other a nutritious sugar water. Beside each feeder was an LED tube, each of which emitted a different color. After 19 controlled experiments designed to eliminate memorization and the sense of smell, the team found that the hummingbirds could readily perceive colors from the visible light spectrum, such as red, pure ultraviolet light, and different blends of UV and visible light, such as ultraviolet mixed with red. They could even tell apart two hues created from different mixtures of red and ultraviolet light. For hummingbirds, being able to discern UV light is likely not just invaluable for finding food, but also for choosing mates and avoiding predators. A couple of episodes ago, we ran a story about the critically endangered shore plover in New Zealand. Remember, they were all collected and moved to a predator-free island in the hopes that they will breed and thrive there. Well, apparently those plovers had their own agenda because that colony is nowhere to be found. Uh, scientists are not sure what happened to them. They're thinking maybe an avian predator decimated the colony. The birds were wearing tags, but they were not being tracked. However, three of those plovers have been found on the mainland and the plans are to return them to the island again in the hopes that they will stay and breed. We've all seen pictures and videos of uh, waxwings and robins getting drunk on fermented berries, but apparently a new study conducted in Poland shows us that many other species of bird love alcohol and not just in berries but alcohol that was left behind by humans so what's the deal with that apparently ethanol gives birds a lot of energy and also makes them a little bit more courageous and that's very important when they're about to start their migration the only problem with that uh, just like with drinking and driving these birds tend to collide with buildings and even have all sorts of aerial uh, accidents with each other so perhaps it's time to bring in some air traffic controllers. I keep coming back to stories about the California condor because I find it so amazing how fast birds can recover when humans decide to help them out or stop uh, messing around with their habitats. Right now, there have been sightings of California condors in the Sequoia National Park where they haven't been seen in 50 years. This means that the area where they were first released into is getting a little bit too crowded for them, so they're spreading out looking for new areas to live. Just a quick summary, in 1983, the last 22 California condors were rounded up by the U.S. Uh, Fish and Wildlife and they were put in a captive breeding program. Right now, there are over 250 condors out in the wild and they are thriving. They are enjoying the ban on lead ammunition and their habitat being left alone. Goodbye for now, our photo contest is still open, it's herons and cranes, and please send me pictures of all the flowers that are popular with your hummingbirds in your garden. Take care everyone, I'll catch you in two weeks.